Which anchor are you using? Mm -hmm. Which anchor are you using? This passage of scripture, when you read it, Paul is giving an illustration. The illustration is that as an anchor holds a ship during rough times, Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, has held us together. And just as a ship is assured that it's not going anywhere because the anchor is there, we can be assured that because of Jesus, we have a heavenly home. Amen. And so Paul makes that comparison here. And so, just like the ship during rough times has an anchor to help it stay steady during difficult times, because a ship is, is made to weather storms. Uh -huh. I propose to you this morning that we are made to weather storms. But we can't weather those storms if we don't have the right anchor. So, what we want to explore this morning is, are you using the right anchor? Go ahead, sir. And if you're not, maybe that's why you haven't been able to weather the storm. Uh-huh. Can I just let you know that because we are alive, there are life storms. Uh-huh. There are things that are just going to come about just because we're living. If you don't want a storm, then just go die. Mm. You don't have to worry about no more storms. But as long as you are alive, there are going to be storms that come in your life. Uh -huh. The thing that we don't need to concentrate on is the storm. We have been made to weather the storm. But we must make sure that we have the right anchor to weather that storm. Go ahead. Just down the street is the Hampton Rose Naval Museum. Mm -hmm. And right there is a battleship called the Battleship Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And if you ever went by there, you'll see that in the front of that, it has two big anchors. If you look at the back of it, I believe you'll find it also has an anchor on the rear. And when that ship, when it was in its heyday, would have to go out for a storm because you know us living in Hampton Rose area But when, it, when a hurricane would come in this area, instead of them anchoring at the base, you know what they do? They would send the ships out. Because the ship was made to weather a storm. Mm -hmm. And it would drop those two anchors in the front and drop that anchor in the back. And no matter what wind or storm would come, that boat didn't have to worry because it had the right anchor hooked up to the right thing. And I propose to you, just like that's a battleship, we are battleships. Uh -huh. We are in a battle for our lives against the enemy. And when the storm comes, we can drop our anchors and be assured that we can weather the storm if we have the right anchor. My God. Go ahead, teach. Now I propose to you that we have tried some other anchors. Yes. Now you gotta raise your hand, you gotta testify with me because I know that you may not want to identify with some of the anchors I'm gonna name, but we have tried some other anchors. Uh -huh. And in trying these other anchors, we have found that they haven't been as sure as they should be. Mm. We have tried the club and found that that's only been an anchor for a few minutes. Uh -huh. Just to give us a few pleasures. But when that storm began to blow real hard, that anchor didn't hold up. We have tried maybe drugs or alcohol, and we'll find that that sustains us for maybe a few minutes. Uh huh. But then after that few minutes, that anchor doesn't hold up. We'll try men, we'll try women, but we'll find even in those relationships that it seems like the storm gets worse uh -huh. instead of getting better. My God. And that anchor doesn't hold up. Isn't it amazing that those anchors only last temporarily? Mm. They only act, last during certain storms. They only give you a temporary relief. But if the storm lasts for any period of time, those anchors do not keep us the way we need 
need to be kept. Do not help us to stay stable the way we need to be stable. But I propose to you that God has three anchors for us this morning. Three anchors that if we will grip a hold of those, no matter what storm comes our way, no matter what difficulties we have, no matter what problem we face, if we use these three anchors, yeah. God will allow us to be just like the battleship in the midst of trials and tribulations, in the midst of the worst storm, be able to be steady. Because it's not that the ship doesn't rock. It's not that the ship doesn't get the waves. What it is is that the ship doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're going to get the waves. Yes, it's going to rock. But the ship does not go down. Our first anchor that we need to grip a hold on, and we're going to make it, is the Word of God. Uh -huh. Go ahead, sir. The book of Psalms 119. So you don't have to turn there. The 104th verse says, The word is a light unto my feet, a light unto my path. The word is an anchor. How is it an anchor? Well, during difficult times, it lets me know that God will never leave me, nor forsake me. Mm -hmm. It lets me know that there is not a situation or a problem that me and God can't handle together. It lets me know that in the midst of problems, he'll be there for me. Cry weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The word is an anchor because it encourages me. It keeps me steady. It keeps me steadfast. Uh -huh. The book of Psalms, the first division says, the second verse, but he delighted in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night, and he shall be he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. Stop right there. A tree planted by the rivers of water is just like an anchor. Because when a tree is planted by the rivers of the water, its roots go down deep. It keeps on getting water to supply the roots. And when a storm comes, that tree does not cool because the roots are down deep and the water supplies the every need yes. that the tree has. And so when I delight myself in the Word of God, when I meditate day and night in the Word of God, I become like that tree. It drops my first anchor. And when the storm comes, it may shake me, but it does not move me. Yes. It may bend me, but it doesn't break me. Because the word is that water that keeps on supplying what I need. That, that scripture continues and said that bringing forth his fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When I get in God's word, when I begin to meditate in God's word, when I begin to read God's word, it becomes an anchor in my life. And when I'm about to do something crazy, his word will talk back to me. Yes. And let me know that that's not the direction I need to go. But it cannot talk back to me if I have no word on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. So his word is my first anchor. It will encourage me. It will keep me steady. It will light my path in the midst of difficult times. It will show me which way to go when I don't know which way to go. The Bible says the word is a discerner of good and evil. It will let me know what is wrong and what is right. It will let me know what direction to go. It will let me know how to walk and which way to walk and how to respond and which way to talk. His word is an anchor, but I cannot have that anchor by itself. That's why many people get the word, but they still kind of waver in it because that's not an anchor he designed for us to have by itself. He designed for us to have three anchors. So I can't have that just yes. by itself. I mean, you see many states that know the word, get quoted back and forth, but yet still the slightest storm knocks them out because yes. they only have one anchor, and one anchor won't hold you. Yes, yes. that's right. Yes, I need the word. Yes, the word is in Bible. Yes, the word must be there. But the word by itself would not hold me. The Bible said that let us kill it, but the spirit give it life, which means the word by itself can take you out. It can cut you up. It won't build you back up. You need more than just the word. Uh -huh. But you need that first anchor of the word. The second anchor that you need if you're going to weather the storm of life is prayer. Yes. First Thessalonians 5, just write it down. You've got to find the scriptures. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
pray without ceasing. The word without prayer won't keep you. Yes. Oh, yes. God. Go the word without prayer won't keep you. I say it one more time. The word without prayer will not keep you. Uh, you'll be well versed in the word. But prayer helps gives you the power and the key. You have the key, but prayer is going to turn it to unlock the door. You need prayer with the word. You need to drop both of your anchors. Uh -huh. Can I let you know that we just did it with the front part of the ship right now. The word is one anchor on the front part. The prayer is one, the other anchor on the front part. And it's going to keep us. But that by itself ain't going to keep us. We're going to need another anchor that we're going to deal with. Because we don't want the backside the way. We need three anchors to steady us. Because the word is my first anchor. Prayer is my second anchor. Philippians 4 says, let your moderate, Philippians 4 and 5 says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The word will let me know what to do and how to do it, but prayer will release the pressure that is in my life. Because uh -huh. you need to let some things out. You need to let somebody know how you feel and what you're going through. And then you need some advice back. And the word will light your path, but prayer will give you to get up and go to walk down the path. Yes. And so you need the word to let you know what direction you're going, but you need prayer so you can relieve the pressure that's on the inside, so you can get instructions on how to handle God's word. Because if God's word is a sword, prayer is my instruction book. Yes. Uh, anybody who has a sword who does not know how to handle it is in danger of cutting their own self. Uh -huh. And so the word gives me my lamp. Prayer gives me my instruction and it gives me a release. I need a release because I got too much pressure built up. I need a release because yeah. the things I'm going through got me on the edge. It got me shaking. I need a release because if I don't release in prayer, I'm going to release on somebody. Uh -huh. And my release on somebody may not be very pretty. Amen. But I can go into my secret closet. I can tell God all about it. And it is like, if you haven't ever, since they didn't turn me and my wife over to the pressure cooker, and when you got a pressure cooker, you see the steam coming out the top of it. Because the steam got to come out the top of it, because if it don't, the pressure cooker will explode. But that's how prayer is. Things begin to build up in your life, and prayer is that knob on the top of it that relieves the pressure at the right time. Go ahead. So it doesn't, you don't explode. Right. <laughs> good one, good one, good one. Can I tell you something? The pressure is coming. You can't stop the pressure because the heat can't be turned down. Because the devil is the one that got control of the heat. But God got control of the pressure vial if you go to him in prayer. And every time the heat gets too high and there's too much pressure in prayer, God will release the pressure vial. 